a gang member who killed a San Diego police officer will remain behind bars after Governor Gavin Newsom reversed the parole board's decision to release him. Jesus Cicino was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Officer Archie Bugs back in 1978. Cicino was 17 years old at the time of that crime, and while he was originally tried as an adult and sentenced to life in prison, the sentence was reduced to a seven-year-to-life term in 1982 due to a change in law. This is the fifth time a California governor reversed the decision by the parole board to release Sasena. A new resource is now available to help domestic violence victims find safe shelter within minutes. SoCal Safe Shelter Collaborative has been able to secure 400 beds to keep these victims safe. And joining us now to talk more about the program is San Diego District Attorney Summer Stefan. Good morning, Summer. Good to have you with us. Good morning. Good to be with you. Absolutely. And especially to really share such a great resource with community members. Let's talk first a little bit about what exactly this, this collaboration allows for. Right. So this is the highlight of innovation and collaboration for this year. We know that the number one need for victims of domestic violence, human trafficking or sexual assault is shelter. Oftentimes they stay trapped in the violence because of the lack of shelter. What this does is it leverages technology so that a victim needs to only make one call to any of the available places where they normally call for help. So not a new number. And that will connect them to the all 400 shelter beds and within minutes be able to match the victim with the correct shelter for her or his needs. Whether she has children, pets, all of these things are taken into consideration. So it, it is actually one of those innovative solutions that with leveraging technology is working right now to serve our victims better. Previously, uh, we know it, when a, a victim of domestic violence uh, files a restraining order or it takes, uh, make, it makes uh, some effort to leave, and sometimes those those um, you know, resources can take days, uh, hours, sometimes uh, to to set up. That is the most dangerous time for a domestic violence situation to occur and for the victim to be harmed in some way. So this is really eliminating that by allowing uh, someone to to right away have a place to go, even if they had, as you mentioned, kids, which is sometimes what makes it so difficult to leave. That's exactly right. The period of time after getting a restraining order initially heightens the risk. So having available shelter now immediately, not days later, is essential because we didn't have uh, the technology to connect all available shelter. It really caused a delay where it's checking each one uh, by itself and sometimes it would take up to 10 days. This is the first time that there is a joinder of the big councils that oversee these things, Domestic Violence Council, the Human Trafficking Council, and California Against Slavery, all coming together and leveraging a national model that was developed. This, this SoCal Shelter Collaborative comes from a national model that came to San Diego, saw that we have the basis for this collaboration and helped us leverage this national technology in order to accomplish this. So when you talk about technology, are you referring to the Safe Night Hotel app? How does that work? Can you explain it? That is a part of the technology, but we use uh, technology in order to actually match and find all available shelters. So it gets updated immediately in order to know whether the sh where the shelter is available. But let's say a right, correct shelter was not available. Then we refer to the, the hotel app to see if we can provide a few days of a hotel voucher while we work on the longer term solution of a, a transitional living or a shelter. So, so they all work together to make sure that, that we don't cause more homelessness. We, we've talked about this before. One of the biggest drivers for uh, mothers and children on the street or living in their cars 
is uh, domestic violence and other forms of violence. Yeah, and unfortunately, we've seen numbers going up during the pandemic, correct? That's right, the numbers have gone up, so this couldn't come at a better time. And because it can all be leveraged by one call, we know that victims are often still living with their abusers. And so that opportunity to make that one call may be the only call they can make safely. Yeah. So we wanna make it work effectively and protect victims. So if, if someone out there watching right now wants to know where to go, find out more about this, or has a loved one that could certainly use this information, uh, are, are the, the violence hotlines the best place for them to go to learn more about this? That's right. I mean, the hotline.org, that's the easiest one to remember for domestic violence. Going there, uh, going there are 24-7 numbers. If you go to San DiegoDA.com, there's a whole tab of every kind of resource. So if you know somebody that needs help, at least go find out the, the right numbers and give those to, to, to the person you suspect is being abused so that when they're ready, they have the, the availability of the number. They don't have to research it. All right. Well, this is a, a great announcement, a wonderful resource. Summer, thank you for coming on this morning to share it with us. Thank you.